sounds and breakdowns. Welcome back to the Chill Sounds and Breakdowns podcast. We are on episode one motherfucking hundred. Uh, I am really happy that we made it this far and we've kept it going and I've gotten to talk to some amazing people. But today we have something special and the thing special is got set up by my friend here. Uh, we got the episode 100 drummer special and I'm going to let the guy whose idea this was introduce it. Nice. Hey, what's up, Bill? <laughs> I don't know if you know me before. I've been on this a couple times already. But my name is John Flores. Uh, I play in a band called Unity and I play in another band called Later Bite. Uh, this... Go ahead and introduce yourself, my boy. I'm Andy. Uh, I play drums in Last of Solace, Atlantic Blue, and every now and again I'm seen playing drums in Notions. Over there? Uh, I'm Jordan, or Drum Joy. Um, <laughs> I play drums for From Joy. And I'm Fosh. I play drums for Deep Incision since my beloved in Trinity. Yep, and then last one, but not least. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> I'm I play in No Cure and Bleak. And I'm very far away from everybody else right now. Yes, uh, Dewey is actually on tour still right now with No Cure and Gideon. Yeah. So I'm glad he could tune in and be here with us today. Yeah, this is absolutely insane to me right now, to be honest with you. <laughs> I was just like, what is... It? Actually, like I, I just saw John play like with Zeta by, uh at Black Cat. Not like so last week ago. or something, yeah. And he just walked up to him. And like, I think like we may have chit-chatted for like a minute. He's like, hey, I have a question for you. I'm like, what is like episode 100? What are we doing? And I'm like, bro, I have no idea. <laughs> He's like, let me do something for you. And I'm like, okay. So I'm, I'm just like here to be a fly on this talented wall here. Because oh. I know that, like everybody in here is so fucking sick at what they do. Um, and I just, I honestly don't know where to start, like, right here. So I'm... Uh, you can kick off some easy little drummer questions. Like, we can go around the room real quick. So for me, <laughs> I'm like, so say the uh, the size of stick you use and what kind of uh, pedals you use for bass drum. So for me, I am, I'm playing a Hickory Forward Weighted 2B by Promark. I wish it was a little bit longer, but that's just what it is that's available to me. Hey, I feel that. Um, and then for pedals, I'm using some... Thomas Speed Cobras, and I got the uh, the Trick Dry Shaft upgrade in the middle. I waited like six months for that damn thing, but it made a world of difference. What about you, Andy? I've been like switching through random pairs of like cheap sticks recently, just because like actual like good sticks are kind of expensive. Yeah. But, like for a while, I tried to just I just like played five A's or like five B's sometimes. I've been trying to switch to five B's because I feel like I actually just get way more power. Mm -hmm. But and then pedals, I've just. For a while, I've just been playing DW two thousands, and they they do the job. But I'm like considering getting these uh, nine thousands that were offered to me for like dumb cheap. Yeah, you should hop on that, bro. For yeah. sure, those are good. Finding finding the deal is like usually what gets you good equipment at the beginning. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just being like, oh, someone be like, hey, I'm sell this real cheap for you. I'm like, fuck it, jump on it. <laughs> bro, what's up, Jordan? Uh, so I play on. I, I switch between whatever is cheaper or available, but either it's a Vic Firth 3A or a Vader 3A Fatback. Yeah, those are big 3A. Cool 3A. Yeah. I've never... What? 3A are fun, bro. They got the little square tip. Yeah. Okay. They, they hit pretty hard. I've tried 7A and yeah. 5A, but I've never heard of a 3A. No, 3A is somewhere in between a 5 and a 5B. A 5A and a 5B. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, they cool. feel really good, but they, they're just a little too skinny for me, so I gotta use a big one. I'm used to marching band shit, so... Yeah, I in a way. I bet you chew through cymbals. No, actually, I'm really good. As long as okay. you hit with good technique, you know. And oh, okay. Away, I was going to say, I use like, the same sticks. Attacking the, yeah. I use those hickory um, two Bs. I'm forward. just digging in too hard, I guess. And, but <laughs> the marching band, when you, like, practice with marching band sticks, it feels so good. It feels so easy because they're just massive and they fit. But yeah. then, but it just made playing those sticks easier, yeah, for yeah. sure. I two Bs, yeah, and then yeah. I use DW 5000s. Nice. What pedals do you use, bro? Uh, just some cheap pearl pedals that I bought secondhand. I don't even know. What they are, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were Probably like... Probably some eliminators or something? No, I like... I don't know, like, they were like 200 bucks, so... They, they were probably like... like a, a black little... Nico, you're so that. clean. Like, I didn't know you were using, like, just... <laughs> Whatever, that's psycho. <laughs> I just, I, <laughs> no, I just like, oh, we skipped Dewey. No, we didn't, not yet. No. Oh, okay, okay. No, um, yeah, I just like crank the springs and uh, I, mean, I just, do, I, I, I stomp, I stomp sure. on them for sure. Absolutely. I stomp right. on them. What's up with you, Dewey? What you playing on? What? 
What's your stick, <laughs> what, what's your stick size, man? <laughs> uh, I just went back to board 5B from Promark. Yeah. But uh, for the longest time, I can't find them anymore. I was using the Jay Weinberg signature from Vader. Ooh. Uh, yeah, it felt like a 3A, like in between a 3A and a 5B. Gotcha. And it was just, it was a little bit longer. And if I could find something that's more comparable to that, I would absolutely go back. But I can't find it anywhere. So I, the 5Bs are still good. Promark is my favorite. Yeah, I, I I noticed that like the Promarks last a little bit longer, like in the long run. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and they're made yeah. here in Texas, so oh, I didn't even know that. Like I actually, exactly. right where, where you're at, bro. The factory's in Houston. Yeah, I didn't know that at all. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm about to go like drive over there and be like, hey, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we can we taking turns with the Dewey. Taking turns with the Dewey. Um, yeah, so I want to. I, I, so I've known John for like a while, but I want to get to know everybody else. And I'm gonna start. Uh, I'm gonna start with with Jordan. Like uh, oh. from Joy, uh, dude. From Joy has been doing some fucking crazy shit. I I was just re-listening to like the newest album, which oh everybody's like released new music. Stop listening <laughs> within the past. Like yeah, which is which is it's so goated. fucking sick. I can't but, stop listening to it. I'm so serious. No. So oh my god! Don't I, say that. I personally love when music jumps from like some real chaotic shit to like the most smooth things and i feel like from joy is a perfect example of that especially like with the outro songs like the when the once the saxophone came in i'm just like what is happening i'm having the time of my life right yeah now. um what how do you how does it go into like creating like music like that do, do you take a big part of like the structure of it me personally no okay. um i i kind of come to the songs as they're already kind of like built um so kellen does a lot of the writing um and he'll put together like kind of like a skeleton of the song and then it'll grow over time once it's like close to being done he and i will sit down and go through and like check every single note and you know tweak fills and um, well, well, I've overhauled entire like morbidly perfect. I overhauled that in almost that entire song uh, with him on the drums because it was it was just kind of like you know kicks following the guitar pattern and mm. like just kind of not basic but skeleton of of a drum yeah. part. Pure <laughs> <laughs> and so I sat I sat down. I was like I kind of want to like fill in all the empty space with just like some ghosts between the the hats and the snare. Mm, yeah. And so we just kind of like. I just put it on a, on repeat, and I filmed myself play like three or four times, and we just kind of like took bits in here here and there from like the parts that I liked, yeah. and then we just mapped it out. By the way, all programmed. Um, none really? of none of that is that's live. A good, that's a good mix. So yeah, I was gonna say yeah. Like okay. yeah, <laughs> that's a good mix. Dude. Yeah, I. Everyone always comes up to me and is like, "Yo, the recording's so good." I'm like, "It's it's programmed." It's programmed. <laughs> but, I, so I, I mean, that's that's a big thing in like the like a drummer community yeah, I was with stuff. Say, like that, the fat can of worms with this. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Between like you know, programmed drums and like the stigma behind it, I guess like has it something. My but, thing like, about okay, it, but you can tell in like my music that my drums are obviously programmed. But yours, sh that shit sounded so real. Like it sounded <laughs> like you didn't even record it with like all the mics that you could have ever needed. It, it sounded like it was recorded on like. One of those, I forget what this, the thing you record with. Like, oh, an EAD. Yeah. I thought yeah. it was like, dude, is that just an EAD tension? <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, like, there's the mix on, on the record, and then you see your Instagram videos, and you play it perfectly. It's that's like, not... oh, yeah, that's on the record. No. Nah. <laughs> but that's like, that's perfect, because, like, that's the thing you want. The, the stigma where people are like, oh, you know, mini drum suck, whatever. It's because a lot of people have shit on the record that they can't play live. And it's, it then becomes a very apparent, you know what I mean? So if you can play it live and pull it off, then it doesn't matter as long as it sounds good, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and it's part like of it. A, I don't know, obviously, like, I think most of us listen to Meshuggah. The Nothing album, you know, when it first came out, it's live drums, live guitars. When they did the remaster, a lot of people don't know this, they replaced it with MIDI drums. Oh. You can tell by all the ghost notes are gone, and a lot of the stuff is like it has a look, look doesn't feel as like human. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But some guy on YouTube recently put both of the orange version and the blue version together, so it's the live drums from the original and the re-recorded guitars from the remaster. That's gas. It's perfect. Bro. Yeah. yeah. But it's even hard to find purely live drums. Yeah, I mean, every, and nowadays everything has got yeah, a sample, sample on top. Blended, yeah. Bro. yeah, yeah, and then like. I've had just bad experiences with we wanted it to be raw and then it was just like they completely took all my drums out and put 
samples in his head. Out. I swear yeah. they did, and it's just my symbols that you hear, and I'm like... That, that happens a lot, too, bro, where, like, yeah, they'll record it and then just keep the, the symbols for the room sound uh -huh. and then replace all of it with samples and stuff, but... You know, whatever your preference may be, it's like, as long, to me, as long as it sounds good, it is good. Yeah. But, you know, obviously, if you were proud to, like, throw that shit down, and then it got replaced, you're like, oh. It's well, like, also, I paid you know. for me to track those drones, yeah. and then it was, I tracked with Harrison, and yeah. he sent, it was, like, 37 tracks per song. Oh, my God. He had, like, 37 different microphones. Whoa. That's so, right. it was, like, you had so much room to, like, really do something yeah, with it, and you just, like, kind of like, fuck all that. Get good drums. Lazy see, that's, I mean, that's where I would see the problem is if, yeah. like, you are expecting one thing and pay yeah. for a certain thing and yeah. then you, so, like, it just gets replaced and people are like, and whoever, like, did that is expecting you to be like, oh, like, he won't either care or notice or not bring it up, which yeah. fucking sucks because, like, why the fuck did I spend all this time and effort? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. But in its work, because, like, getting to the point of, like, you playing those songs where you feel confident enough to record them, especially, like, the, the type of stuff that, like, y'all play, like, <laughs> is really fucking difficult like it's all got to be like perfect so if you're dedicating time to do that and someone's just like oh let's just put samples over it which yeah. again it is is becoming more of a, a standard and norm just because it, it makes the, i guess the workflow a lot easier than trying to figure out how to edit like every drum mm -hmm. and make sure everything is sounds good or if not everything's on time which i don't think it's is an so issue easy <laughs> to just have the perfect sounds and it's annoying that it's so easy to have yeah. perfect sounds yeah, yeah. The age of the bedroom guitarist. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. The consistency. It's like, damn, bro, this dude's mixes are fat. It's like, no, Nolly from Get Good mixes are fat. That's a preset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's that's really so it you, you really come come through and like revamp like the the drum parts that yeah, are written so like, like, after the fact, which I I kind of get because like when I was playing in a band, it was always like different what the drummer would hear and want to see in the song, and then what. Like us as a uh, like our mm. guitar player or whatever, we're trying to write drums. Yeah, yeah. like oh, you're writing, and I always hear the term like you're writing drums like a guitar player. Like it's it's not yeah. like what the natural feel of it normally is. You know what I mean? Um, yep. So it's a, it's a different perspective. Yeah, definitely. And Kellen does a stellar job too of just like putting down drums that are like similar to what I would play. Like mm -hmm. he he watches like videos of me play all the time. <laughs> Like, he'll record our practices, and he'll just, like, watch me do, like, just different things. And um, he's really good at, like, taking bits and pieces of that and also incorporating it when he's putting together, like, the, the first skeleton of, like, a song. Okay. Um, so I'll come to it, and I'll be like, hey, what's this? You know, that's something I would do already. And, like, most of the time it's, it's very smooth, but, um, you know, morbidly perfect. And the beginning of Machine, actually, um, that the, the intro fill to Machine, um, I was like, I want to do something like Dillinger. <laughs> yeah. So we do it for like two measures and then you never hear it again. <laughs> but um Yeah, yeah, that intro last, last is last night, bro. We were watching Billy Reimer videos. It was so sick. Bro. Oh my god, yeah, that's like that's the guy. Yeah. That's the guy. Incredible. Um okay, and then uh, I well, I'm gonna move on to uh Dewey, which right now uh, you're in where are you at right now, Dewey? You're in Michigan, right? I'm in somewhere in Michigan. I think I'm in Detroit. I mean, I'm in, in Detroit. Detroit, and you're currently on tour with uh, Gideon, correct? Yeah, we're we're with Gideon, Left to Suffer, and Fox Lake right now. Fucking sick! Is it like that? Amazing. Uh, thank you again. Thank you for making the time. But um, so with you, you're currently playing with uh, you're currently playing with uh, No Cure, and you said Bleak. Bleak, yeah. That's that's fucking cool. What's uh, how's that been like juggling both of those man? That's a, definitely a a wide range that you're playing there. It's. Yeah, man. I mean, it's fun uh, having two completely different styles that I get to kind of put my ass into. <laughs> so, um, I mean, they're both very, like, stylistically different, but uh, they're both, like, elements of, like, bands that I grew up listening to, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah. So, playing with a, like, a hardcore band with like death metal influence and stuff like that. It, it like helps me scratch that part of my brain. And mm. then also like growing up listening to like Chevelle and shit with my dad in the car, like doing that with bleak, it kind of helps scratch the other end of that brain, you know? Yeah. So it, it, it's really nice. Um, juggling the two has been interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they're both so good. Like that's the thing, and they're both like on trajectories now that are you're gonna be busy with both of them. Like yeah, 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 for sure. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I mean, Nokia's definitely 
doing some shit right now. And so, like, I'm, I'm not going to, like, I'm very grateful for it. But, like, uh, reception to the new Bleak record has been pretty good, too. So, like, Absolutely, yeah. It dropped, I'm like, yesterday, very grateful right? for that. The re- yeah. What's that? The it dropped, like, dropped yesterday? Um, what day is today? The third? It dropped two days ago. That's Friday, yeah. Friday, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Ble- Bleak... When I, uh, I forgot, uh, I think a friend of mine, actually Bernice, I think was the one that showed me Bleak and I started just listening. I'm like, what is this? But seeing, seeing Bleak live is what just made me completely lose my shit over it. I'm just like, oh, this, what is this? Like, it's a combination where you're just saying like, it's, it's funny that you're saying it's from the influences like Chevelle and stuff that you would have. I'm like, oh, let's bring it into like a more like a newer, younger version of that. And it's really fucking sick to hear. Um, thank you. Yeah. I want to say like the coolest thing about Bleak is like. You hear the music and you think, oh, it's going to be like a super soft show. And then you go and it's it's all of the same people you would see at a hardcore show are going to see Bleak because it just, it hits. We all have that itch in our head to hear it, you know, and he's got the itch to play it. We want to see that shit. But it's so cool to see like the hardcore people and like alternative rock, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like yeah, come, together. come together. It's so sick. That's the thing with Bleak. Whenever we started, we were like, oh, we're going to be a shoegaze band. Because everybody was being a shoegaze band at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, then we played a few shoegaze shows. And I'm not, like, dogging on anybody, but it just wasn't, it, like, we all grew up going to hardcore shows, and it wasn't the same. The energy you know, like, yeah. it, it felt Yeah, like, there were motherfuckers sitting in chairs and shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I I did not I didn't fuck with it, man. And so we were like, I, like maybe we should bring in some like, heavy, like we wanted to blend like heavier stuff. And now we're like trying to go more towards like the early two thousands. He of, said, like, "My brother in Christ, where are the riffs?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like it, it was cool to listen to, but like, bro, fucking stand up. You're at a show, you know, yeah. like. Yeah. That's, it was I, just goofy. I, I feel like that's a big part of, like, it. well, I mean, obviously the drums are what keep, like, the rhythm and, and, and really is the biggest element that gets the people to move for the most, like, in general, like, every song, and I think as a drummer, especially, like, in the bands that y'all are playing, like, that's got to be, like, one of the biggest things, like, that's how to, how to like get the, the room to move. the main attraction to a live aspect, bro, is, yeah. like, you know, the, a lot of the guitar tones you're hearing or whatever are coming through an amp modeler anyway, so it's, like, almost exactly the same as on the record, mm. but, yeah, the drums in your face, hearing the cymbal reverberate in your ear, like, oh, you know, shit. that's totally different. Feeling that kick drum literally, like, against your chest sometimes. That's, yeah, you know? I, I, I remember having, like, one of the first times, like, feeling that, where, like, I was really, like, into the drum, like, what, why am I, like, feeling this, too? And it was literally just feeling, I was up at the front, so it was the actual kick just, well, right just feeling, and I'm like, yeah. dude, fucking, and it, <clears throat> it's the most the fun air. to watch, too, like, is, is a really fucking good drummer just, ha- and for the most part, like, most everybody I see, especially like every, like in this room, like y'all have like so much fun playing like music, which yeah, just yeah, spreads, like spreads don't, the energy. Don't, don't look at my face when I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, John be making the best face. Yeah. But he said something about live aspect, and just if we're talking about Dewey, Bleak especially. Oh my God! Like listening to the record is so sick. You know, it like has a whole feel, and then you see it live, and he plays it like 10 BPMs faster. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much fun it adds a whole like energy and life to it all but it's still the same song yeah. it's badass yeah yeah i like they, that i, like I mean that. we we were like originally we weren't doing like we just like started playing to a click for bleak and um that's game it dangerous. felt yeah. it, it felt so weird because of how much faster we used to play like all the songs before like we went to click and so we went to click because of how fast we were playing it. We were like, this is getting too much. And then whenever we got to click, we were like, no, this sucks actually. So like all of the songs on our click are like 15 to 20 BPM faster oh my God. than the so actual song. Anyway. And it's funny that you mentioned that because Tyler, the drummer of Foreign Hands, before they played with a click and Wallaby. they added, yeah, Wallaby added the click, um, he made a poll on his Instagram and I slid up because he was like, should I make the click? faster like we play it live or should i we play it real tempo and i don't remember what the poll like said but i think they play it at tempo but playing it a little yeah. bit faster is smart too it's cool 
Well, the, the thing with, like, hardcore music is, like, you, or, or, like, not even necessarily hardcore music, but, like, this whole niche thing that we have going on here, like, uh, it's very emotion and, like, feel-driven yeah, compared yeah. to a lot of other genres. And so, like, giving it a sense of, like, natural, like, vibe is super important to things like this, which is why, like, it, I mean, with no cure, like I'll, I, I know that like you, you probably do the same, like slowing down certain parts because that's what the vibe calls for, or like speeding up parts because people want it to feel like that. So, moving that to a click was really tricky. So, like any Having breakdowns we have, like with the ups and downs. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> yeah. Also in hardcore, all the tempo changes that we do that are just abrupt, abrupt. or random. Abrupt as fuck. <laughs> and it may, it's so much easier to do it without a click, just like the random exactly. slowdown. But with the click, it's like, I need to have two beat two beats in my ear before it, and then that's going to interrupt with the time before that. It's not going to work. Mm. Dude, I, I yeah. Atlantic Blue for a set for Emo Night, we were playing without a click. And it's like there's such a different feeling because you're actually in control of how much you are slowing down mm -hmm. or how much you're speeding up. And it's like it's very different. It's, it's a very different feel because I'm actually so used to playing with a click now that now uh -huh. when we practice and I don't have a click, I'm just like, wait, I'm supposed I'm the only thing. I'm the mess. You are yeah. the click. Yeah. I am the only thing. I don't have anything to rely on now. Yeah. yeah. You're the backbone. You know, but like waiting for cues and stuff. Like I, so uh, when I played in a band, we did the same switch. Like so, we were using, we weren't using any clicks, and I'm like, we're playing fine. And every time we would record, I said and be like, why is it so fucking fast? Like every time, like every time, every song, I'm like, the wonder, like, because I, 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 I would do vocals, and I'm just like, why am like, am I out of breath so much? I shouldn't have uh -huh. enough time, like between these things. But we would, everything would be sped up, and then that was a uh, like the root, like the talk that we had to have, like as a band. And then when drummer, we started doing clicks, uh, was like the same conversation to our drummer which was like you're it now like so you're like everybody's just going off of what you're doing so if you like you got to know these clicks and be comfortable with them like backwards and forwards because yeah one slip up and it's all gone <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, exactly. yeah from joy yeah which was the nervous part and i was i was i'm not like i was kind of like on the fence about it and like kind of against it because i'm like i just like to be in the moment and feel it but then seeing like that yeah, I was like, oh, there's a very big noticeable difference. That does, that didn't sound good, you know what I mean? If it did, I'd be like, oh, whatever, like yeah. it's fine, we can play like it's that. A, but... It's really scary using Click Live because, like you said, like if your laptop fucks up, bro, you're toast, you know? Yeah, that's oh, it. Yeah. I hate that feeling, yeah. bro. If your pack dies, you're dead. <laughs> what was Dewey saying? Dude, on stage. Some some guy was like standing side stage and Gideon uses like a whole like computer rig for their set, right? And there was a guy standing by their laptop, like just like three dudes like standing by the laptop, but a guy got like really nosy and like nobody was guarding the laptop and he was like looking over at their stuff and like he was getting really close to the laptop and everybody was like, Don't you fucking do it, dude. <laughs> um, but like uh Tyler went over, he's like, Hey man, can you just like step back? And he wouldn't step back. And then Caleb went over and he's like, bro, like, back off a little bit. And then finally, uh, Dan, their vocalist, like, during an interlude part, like, walked up to the guy and was like, if you touch our, or like, he was like, step away from the computer or I'm going to fucking hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know, bro. I'd book the fuck, I'd be right the fuck out of there. I don't know yeah, if people real. don't listen, bro. Like, no. Yeah, they think it's a joke. And I'm like, bro, I'm literally running a live set right now. Like, this is going to be all No, dude, off. yeah. Like, it's, it's it's part of the production. Like if you fuck that up, like mm, people are stupid, man. Yeah, it's yeah. fucking difficult. I mean, I remember uh, not this past so what, but the last one, the uh, Polyphia was playing right, and their their in ears went out oh, for the drummer. Shit. So yeah. like the, uh, the so what? was like yeah, just like tapping them and keeping like the rhythm. But it's like oh, you yeah. got to figure out ways to like go around that because I, I remember it used to happen to us so much. So I, was gonna, was, like, I was gonna bring up that specific festival too. So what? Two years ago, bro, it was boiling hot and then like Polyphia played in the same place that we did yeah. which is literally in the fucking bowl yeah. right so we're just literally cooking bro and my dumb ass wore a hockey jersey on stage to the same uh, uh, cause Wait. I thought it was, it was cool the, but the coolest cool. hockey jersey it was not physically cool inside my fucking <laughs> jersey bro. I was yeah I was, it's a Michigan jersey it's super fucking sick but oh, uh, that's badass yeah yes. dude our guitar player Ricky uh, his 
laptop overheated, bro, during that set. Oh my god, so, yeah. Like, that's a real thing you gotta watch out for, bro. It's like Please, the sun, dude. the electronics don't like the sun. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. crazy. It's, the it's, first, yeah, it's weird shit that you don't think about until it fucking no, uh, happens. Uh, yeah. No, the first future you show, uh, that shit happened, and I'm the one with the laptop backpack, you know, with me, so I click play, and it's perfectly allotted time of music for the set. Yeah. And every song has a backtrack, has a count in, everything, and it's an old ass 2012 like MacBook. No. And so first song in stops. And I keep playing. <laughs> it comes back on. Somewhere. It, it literally had paused. And in that time that I had kept playing in the song and it came back on, it just picked up where it left off. Oh, no. So it's playing like oh, different shit. backtracks. Oh. We're playing different parts. Also, um, the vocalist is like turning around looking at me like, what part what, are we at? What, what cue are we at? And I'm just like, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> For real, you're in the same I'm boat. already here. Yeah, like, every song it fucked up on except the one song that was only backtracks. What? Wow. Jeez. Like, and that makes no sense. Yeah. It was like our interlude song that he talks through. Oh my oh, god! Uh, and, but it, and it, everyone's turning around looking at me like, "Why are you fucking this up? Why are you ruining yeah. this?" I'm like, "I'm not doing shit. You want me to stop? Like, that fucker right stop. there pointed at the yeah. computer. <laughs> you got like a, black. You got like an extra band member, and it's not doing his job. Yeah, yeah. he said, "Oh, old, unreliable." No, <laughs> yeah, really. I handed that back to him. I said, "Get a new one." Yeah, yeah. no yeah. shit. Take yeah, it back. That was... That's the comfort of playing with auto click is that you can like if shit if your electronics fuck up if something else fuck up, if something else fucks up you are your own music. Yeah. But once your computer dies, how the fuck are you gonna play your set? Yeah. yeah. That's one thing. Like I, I would when we switched to clicks. That's I would always like iterate. I was like, if this shit doesn't work, like especially like once it happened, like the first time, like we need to just have what window we're gonna use to try to troubleshoot this, and then if that if we get that past that window, it's just gotta be like fuck it, and we're playing it. Like, without it. But the thing that sucked is that we eventually, like, incorporated, like, lights into the show, which ran off of the same click tracks. Like, they ran together uh, mm-hmm. off of, like, the MIDI. And then, like, we had instances where the tracks would work, but then, like, the lights wouldn't work. Or then, like, you, someone wasn't hearing shit. I'm like, what is... I go, what's happening between when we transfer it, like, yeah. from practice to here? Something is, like, going off. And I, I always hated it, like... If if we had like one little bit, it's like oh it's not working. I'm like fuck it, we're going. Like and they're like, well yeah. let me work on it. Nah, I'm not doing this because yeah. I hate just standing there and be like, yeah, what's it, going on? It sucks that the name of that it's game is fuck around and much. find out. Yeah, like, you know yeah. What I mean? yeah, you have no choice. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, Andy, you are the youngest in this room, and I didn't know how young you were until uh, Jonathan brought it up that you uh, you just turned seventeen. <laughs> yeah, that's, like that, yeah, yeah. A couple, <laughs> week, couple weeks ago ish. Yeah, that's. That's actually incredible because you like, from what I've seen, have a lot like of experience under your belt already. Like, I was you... pissed when I heard about Somewhat. this kid for the first time. <laughs> I was pissed. I saw videos. I, saw and I said, videos "God damn it, fuck this kid." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But because um, the rest of us are yeah, relatively the same age. Like I'm 26, Foster's 25, Jordan 26, Dewey you're 24, right? Three. Yeah. Wait, what? Uh, I, just, I just turned 24. Oh nice. my god! Nice. I didn't <laughs> yeah. know that. Wow. So, like I said, even though he's separated by age, yeah. not in skill, he's literally right there with us, bro. Like, yeah. Um. So, you was your first band last night? Uh, no, I joined. So, my first first band, mm. I was I was fourteen, and I had joined it around like September twenty twenty two, and we played one show, and it was with Drowning Pool because the vocalists of the band uh were the two sons of the drown or the two, oh, the sons of the Drowning Pool vocalists wow, at the time, okay. and the band was called What's Left of Me. Uh, and that, it ended around like January ish, just because there was arguing. It didn't work yeah. out. And I around like December ish, I joined Last End of Solace, and then we actually kind of started playing more. And I played the same venue I had played my first show at, which was Trees. Uh, but Last End of Solace's first show was with Element Eighty and said. Nice. But my first That's two shows were at like Trees. Yeah. Yeah. That's a crazy that first a- venue. I worked my way up to that one. <laughs> yeah. Bro, I played the shop. Yeah, shop fucking for a show. Nice. You know I mean? The shop. <laughs> That's cool. Shop. Rip. Oh my god. Man, I joined right. like Atlantic Blue in like October 2022. Nice. Dang, yeah, you've like you've been playing a lot, and I've seen like a few like your drum playthroughs. But where's where does your like drumming I guess career start? Um, I would say where I really really like started like networking a lot and getting into the scene was at least when I joined like Last Night of Solace. What's left of me didn't do like that much. Mm. We we had an EP that we were making and we released one of the songs and the band broke up and we didn't mm. end up finishing it. Yeah. 
So that was like my first experience making music with other people and then I never got to share it. Mm. And then I would say like now in the last year, last night of Solace, I'm way more involved in like the la- in the writing process and Atlantic Blue too. Mm. So like I've developed much more as a writer too. But like I've started I started playing drums technically forever, but like consistently for like ten years. And I've never had a lesson. I just learned from rock band basically. Yeah. Really? That rules. <laughs> that that rules so sick. hard. Yo, real quick, going in a circle, how old were you when you started taking drums seriously? So like how old were you, Andy? I probably Well, I'm seventeen now. And I think I really wanted to be like in a band by the time I was like middle schoolish. And I was still like really wanted to be a YouTuber at the time, so I was making a bunch of videos, especially mm-hmm. when I actually got to play my drum kit. Mm-hmm. Um, but eventually, when I actually joined a band, and then I kind of left my YouTube channel, and then I just started actually gaining a lot of knowledge about mm-hmm. being in a band. I nice. guess. Yeah. Through like around there, there's like eleven, twelve, or something like that. And eleven, twelve, yeah. And then yeah. I actually joined a band at like fourteen. That was about the same mm-hmm. age. Yeah, I was in like seventh grade, and I had actually started playing trombone in uh, in <laughs> band. But then I was like, bro, I can't do this forever, bro. Like, I got to play drums. And so my mom, like, wrote a letter to the band director asking me to switch. It must have been very strongly worded because he came out and was like, uh-huh, yeah, you can switch. <laughs> <laughs> yo. Mom, I'm fucking around. Yeah. But, uh, yo, I know I got to get a quick shout out to my first percussion teacher. His name is Stuart Spoon. Bro, <clears throat> I mean, it's been so long, he can't get in trouble for this anymore. But he <laughs> he lied on the paperwork for me. I was supposed they you can't switch the percussion unless you, you have come out. You cut that, get cut that, cut right? that. <laughs> he got like three or four years of piano experience, and I didn't have that at all, right? And so he literally just took me in the office. He was like, "Hey, can you play that? Whatever." I just copied all the rhythms. He was like, "Okay, I'll teach you the rest. That's fine." And then he lied on me for the paper, and I got in. And so, real shit bro full circle he came to watch unity play in december when we played at trees bro and like he came and hung out the whole day he knew the songs bro he was like yo are y'all playing uh killing alchemy tonight you're playing rock shit and i was like dang he did his homework <laughs> that's fucking dope bro. yeah that's I, fucking cool yeah no it was it was really nice to have him there in a full circle bro like i i love that man bro like for real, for real. he did a lot for me man yeah, having people to More take chances on you to do that. you know That's saying? crazy, yeah. Yeah, I, I could have turned into a shithead, bro, and like it would have been all for nothing, but you know, he took a chance on me and it worked. Hell yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> guess I started when I was around eight. Handicap, his dad's a drummer. Yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is the truth. I mean, I had my first drum kit, like they bought me a little baby one when I was like two. And I just hit on it, you know. I remember putting my me. drumstick through the kick drum when I was <laughs> oh, young, shit. and then at that point they're like, "Yeah, nope, that's it." That's and it. Then, <laughs> You're done. <laughs> uh, my dad had a drum set in the living room forever, like, because uh, he was in a band. We were actually listening to it on the way here. Mudflap, so yeah, badass. Yeah, if y'all don't know about that, go check out Mudflap, bro. It's hard. It's the, on YouTube. It's it. He was he pointed it out. Candiria vibes. I'm wearing Very a shirt, much, but yeah. it's fucking sick. Anyways, shout out my dad, Beetle. Um, mm-hmm. I was eight. He quit doing drums when I was around five, six mm-hmm. to be a dad. And then it was at that point that I was like, well, now I could do the musician thing. I'm going <laughs> to, I played guitar at six and seven. I have like a Dean, but I didn't enjoy it very much. I did not have the mental capacity to mm-hmm. learn all that shit. I just wanted to hit shit. So I picked up my dry, my dad's drumsticks and I was playing just already just out of, uh, I guess subconscious or whatever and he came around the corner with a camera and recording me and shit but at eight years old I guess I started I didn't join a band until I was like I guess 15 or 16 okay but shit was fun yeah yeah when did you start uh (laughs) man I'm probably around the same age I think I was like 11 or 12 I used to go to this like um this like youth group on Wednesdays with my friends mm, nice. and um they they had like a drum set set up in the youth room that was the first time I ever sat down like behind a kit and I was like it's kind of fun yeah um I don't think I really started taking it seriously though until I had like gotten my first kit in high school um and so I'd get home from school every day before my parents got home and like yeah. I would just sit down and, and play for like an hour until mm-hmm. everyone else started getting home um but I didn't actually join a band until 2017 Okay. Shout out Apotheca. <laughs> um, yeah, th- I mean, yeah. Okay. Nice, dude. Dewey. Joseph. <laughs> when did you start? Oh. Um, God. I was probably about nine. Uh, I didn't really, I didn't get my first kit until I was like 10. But um, I learned the basics from 
rock band. No joke. Nice. Like, Another. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know how to lay down a beat until like I discovered rock band, and I was like so like into. I was a Guitar Hero kid. Whenever like I was growing up, like that's how same, I like same. found most mm. of my music and shit. Absolutely. Same, yeah. <laughs> so. Me too. Straight up, like I I had both. Like I don't know if you knew much about this, but the rock band kit and the guitar hero kit were two completely different. Yeah, uh, absolutely. They are oh, yeah. two completely different animals. I was a uh, kind of decent at guitar hero drums, and I went to rock band drums. And I was like, dude, I suck. What I kind of I kind of hated that that they were different. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, the, the guitar rock hero band, had the rock the band drums sucked yeah. so much compared to the guitar hero drums. Yeah, but yeah. I had both, and my parents were not like they didn't think. They wanted to see like how serious I would be about it, and so like until I got an actual kit, I just wanted to play so much that I like made a uh, like a, this is psycho, but like I took apart the rock band kit and I like pieced it together on top of the Guitar Hero kit, and I made an entire practice pad drum set out of my Whoa. like Guitar Hero and rock band kits. I did the same thing with an electric and, uh, drum around that time <laughs> like I started getting into like like I started like really trying to learn like Metallica and Avenged Sevenfold and shit and so I like there's a video somewhere of me playing Unholy Confessions on a fucking like <laughs> Practice pad, that monstrosity. Yeah, like, like I was gonna say, like this Frankenstein of a kid. Monstrosity. <laughs> yeah, like a Frank, a Frankenstein monster kit. And so my parents, like my, my parents, saw it, and they're like, "All right, we'll get you a kit." And so, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's how it happened. And so, like around ten, that's whenever I finally started, like actually playing. If it wasn't for Rock Band and Avenged Sevenfold, I don't think I'd be doing this. Yeah, man, no, absolutely. Guitar That's Hero, I got Guitar Hero two for Christmas one year. Shit, changed my life, bro. Damn, I've had three dude. rock band drum sets. Yes. Because <laughs> yeah. they, did you fuck I've them up? Three. Oh, okay. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, did you fuck them up? Absolutely. One of them I got out of a dumpster, and I don't regret it. Nice. No, no, no. Hey. They just threw it away, and I was like, it still works. It's all, it's mine now. Oh, that was cool because like some of those like would work as like I saw people using them as MIDI kits like to yeah. record stuff. Yeah, like I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, they do. I bought two of the symbol pack, like the symbol attachments that mm. come with them too. And before they broke and didn't work on Rock Band anymore, I would like attach my Rock Band equipment in weird ways to my electric drum set because I never liked the actual sounds it gave me. So I just put more things on my drum set because. As a drummer, I wanted a million fucking things to hit, and I still do. Yeah. So I would just like attach all my random rock band symbols to like my three or four electric drum set symbols, and then I would just like watch YouTube videos of either rock band or I would learn random drum covers for like years, and that's how I was practicing for like ever. Yeah, how I practiced for the longest time, like middle school and high school, I'd come home from school every day and play for two hours. And I would, first song I'd play is Recreant by Chelsea Grin. <laughs> Always the first song. And then I'd play through The Flood by Mice and Men. Or really? I'd, or I'd play some, like, Memphis Mayfire. That was, that's how I warmed up. That was my <laughs> shit. Damn, that's crazy. When I started playing drums, I was not into metal. Like, the heaviest thing I had listened to was, like, Linkin Park. That's still uh, pretty fat and heavy, yeah. though. I mean... Like, supposed to like, lying from wise, you, bro? Yeah, I, I, but yeah... So like I would when I would drum like my influences I don't know if you guys are familiar with like Cobus um, he was like yeah, the first uh, like you? the first person that I started yeah. watching like play yeah. drums on South YouTube African drummer, yeah yeah he's, he's badass I saw his like Skrillex cover I was like oh this is what like this is cool this is fun you know mm -hmm. and so he's I started like man. just ripping like random like dubstep songs off like the internet and just like it it I feel like that kind of like gave me a lot of room to like learn creativity behind the kit mm. um definitely but, room to explore yeah. definitely but not as much discipline so like there was a lot of like bad habits and just like noodling and not good drumming that i did for a long time before i like got into you know more like so the next guy would be like luke holland uh I and then like <laughs> he so like I saw a Make Total Destroy cover that he did, and that changed everything for me. Yeah. Um, like, well, I saw the kick patterns and during the chorus, and I was like, I want to do that. That's fucking cool. I don't like this this music yet, yeah, and, yeah. but like, <laughs> uh, I was like, this is really badass, and that, that was kind of like my gateway into like heavier music. Yeah, no, that's awesome, bro. Luke Holland changed the game for me too. Yeah. I had like my neighbor was watching. He was the one that showed me. He was homeschooled, 
So he had a lot of time oh, okay. on his hands. <laughs> he had he showed me a lot of the music that I got into. He was the one that got me into like Bring Me the Horizon and all that shit. Mm. So uh, he was watching Luke Hall and I was like, who the, who's this Justin Bieber looking at? Because <laughs> uh, at the time it was like everybody loves Justin Bieber. Yeah. I was like, I want to be that guy. Oh, no. <laughs> Swishing my hair yeah. and flipping my sticks. <laughs> But yeah, Luke Holland was the, one of my first inspirations, and Adam Gray. That's dope too. Yo, last night, uh, <laughs> Nina Foster's partner asked us like, if who is a drummer that if you met them you would cry, and so I think uh, Foster and I had said Thomas Hockey from Sugar. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jordan said Billy Reimer. Yep. Um, I said another one would be Joey Jordison. You know, if I ever had the chance to meet him, like that would be insane, bro. Uh, what about you, Andy? I don't even know, to be honest. Right. I haven't had, like, a drummer that I, that has been my genuine, like, like favorite, Matt favorite for a while. Yeah. Like, I, I just kind of do my thing. But, like, if I met the drummer of, like... I, I, I don't even know. I can't... I think okay. can't, I can't think of anything. Yeah. What about you, Dewey? I'll just do my thing. Man, honestly, probably... Um, I mean, I mean, oh shoot! Did I, okay, there you are. I'm trying to make sure he's yeah. getting around. I appreciate you, Andy. You've been you've been clutching no, yeah. turning into who's talking. Um, I mean, Avenged Sevenfold was like the band that, that like got me. Rest in peace, the Rev. Rest in peace. And so the Rev probably, or I mean, whenever I started like going like getting into heavier music in high school and stuff, it was always Igor from Sepultura. Bro. You know? mm. Yes, that's cool. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that's that's the band where I learned like, oh, you can, because like everybody was like, you can't hit hard. Like if you hit hard, nobody's ever gonna be in a band with you. And then I listened to Sepultura, and I was like, you guys are fucking idiots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dude. And so, yeah, uh, pro- honestly, probably probably him, him, him or the Rev. Like that would be insane. Yeah, the Rev's either. dead. But, I mean... <laughs> I mean, obviously, same thing with Joey, but, like, yeah, no, those are our heroes growing yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's super dope. Did you say yours? Oh, what? Well, you, well, you yeah, yeah, Billy Reimer. Um, well, Vosh, you've just been... Currently, like, what, what I became obsessed with was the... Um, the deep incision stuff. Like, oh, yeah. I just went back and, like... Again, like, it's really the, cool because I went back... I think, I Honestly, yeah. like, I've, I've listened to the... To these songs and be like, oh yeah, these are really good. But I went back and like did like, I guess like a deeper listens to stuff, and uh-huh. it's fu- <laughs> but, um, and it's it's just really oh and a drum puns here too and a drum puns yeah. we're, we're getting it all out um, of the <laughs> dude the energy in those fucking songs is so fucking sick Thanks, and dude um, I don't know just the combination of like the the drums with like. There's like these little like tiny like melodic parts in the background that come through really nicely. Um, again, it's that juxtaposition for me that I fucking I love. I love that mixture of stuff. Nah, bro, Fosh and his guitar player Nate are a whole Kaniac combo. Like, they, <laughs> straight up, bro. Team, straight up. Extra team. toes, three sauces, yeah. bro. Like, <laughs> straight up. That's a compliment. Butter on both sides. Um, <laughs> but deep incision, deep incision has been around uh, how long now? I guess we dropped 2021, and mm. uh, and then we waited. <laughs> so fucking long it seems like it's not it wasn't on purpose um but <clears throat> yeah those so those first three songs on the demo from 2021 i those were all made before i even actually joined the band mm. i joined i played the first show and everything so i mean i've been there the whole time but those were already tracked and they had already done everything and it's really funny to go listen to it's really dope tracks and parts that nate put on drums mm. but all of the blast beats are left hand lead, so it's like the snare is the downbeat mm. and the ride is on all the upbeat. So when you go back and listen to it, you'll hear it. It's just really it honestly is really weird sounding. It's crazy. <laughs> but it hurts so my brain. the two songs that we put out earlier this year, yeah. I think January fifth or sixth, um, we actually tracked those like two years ago. And we talked about this earlier about um I think you were talking about how you write your songs with From Joy. Mm. You, you record yourself and kind of choose your parts and then choose which ones you like, right? Well, those songs that we put out, we tracked pretty quick after writing them, I want to say. Mm. So we've played them a million times in the time since we wrote them till we released it. And I play completely different parts oh. now. <laughs> oh, no. And, uh, it's just like, damn, I really wish we didn't do that. But it happened. I, I love those tracks. And Deep Incisions, 
probably like what I feel is probably my favorite band right now. Really? Okay. Because I mean, I'm more part of the writing in that band, and then mm. it's just more of the sound I want. I love the the OG metalcore sound, and since my beloved yeah. <clears throat> Omar is a god when it comes to writing that shit, but those parts just call for a very specific drum style you know in deep incision i kind of have that free reign to do whatever i want mm. uh until nate tells me to stop modulating and then i gotta stop. <laughs> <laughs> he let me do that on virtual not everything needs triplets <laughs> yeah yes, everything does. everything does yes, need triplets. Yes. <laughs> triplets disclaimer absolutely like that's like he's like yeah i'm gonna have three kids right bro <laughs> Fuck. triplets for life is there, is there like a common disagreement that like as a drummer you normally have like with your bands when it comes to writing uh it's for me it's the modulation because they they want it to be in four and i want to do a quarter note triplet with my mm -hmm. crash and p keep it in four but they hate it uh, but that type of shit and normally i guess i'll just cop out and follow the feet with the guitar too much and they'll mm -hmm. want it to be Different. Independent or yeah. yeah. And my excuse is that we're just learning the songs, we're writing it, so just let me play it and I'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just like those songs. Uh we track them and then the more times we play it, the better I write the song and now it's not the same, but it's still the songs are banging. I'm super Yeah, excited. I I, like I really, really thoroughly like enjoy those and like kept and there's only two, so I just like left it on a loop and I'm like, just let them fucking play. Yeah, it over get those strange little boys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um Yeah, man, that's that's there's a lot to go. Yeah. I'm like trying to decide. <laughs> like I was like, okay. Um, well, you're asking about like if there's any disagreements. Yeah, yeah, on, like, right. Writing drum I parts. I asked a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> there's like very, very few things that I disagree on when we're like putting the drum parts together. But mm -hmm. there's been a couple times where Kellen and I are sitting down and we're like analyzing every single like hit because it's all again, it's all programmed. Mm -hmm. And there'll there'll be like sometimes we'll just put like a blanket like humanization over a certain part and it'll, like, drop the velocities of certain hits. And I'm like, don't do that. Almost might be. <laughs> don't do that, because I'm going to hit that hit hard, you know? Yeah. And, it, and yeah. it, yeah, we've had to go back and, like, correct a few things, but. Just, just uh, like, for me, cool. I don't know. What, what is, like, a humanization? Like humanization, oh, so you can humanize the, like, the timings where it'll, like, kind of, like, displace them just a tiny hair off of, like, being on the grid. Oh, okay. um, Sometimes it can make it sound a little more human. Sometimes it makes it sound, for me, like when I notice it's, it, you can set the parameters too, or it's like mm. there's this much humanization or maybe this much. And um, when there's not too much, it's, it, you know, it does make it sound a little bit less robotic. Robotic, robotic exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, or you you can also like kind of like humanize the velocities. Mm. Um, so if. That's what you're talking about, like the volumes when they drop down. He's like, well, no, I'm not going to play that soft. That part, I can still play uh, that hard. Yeah, yeah. it'll okay. make, it, it can make some of the hits sound like inconsistent. Um, uh, so okay. like from, from, you, you're not going to hit the snare like, if you're on an accent, you're not going to hit it like half as hard as the last time you hit it on, you know, on the right. same beat. Oh, so gotcha, like, gotcha. Um, yeah. That was one, there's, that's like the only disagreement that I have with Kellen sometimes is when he goes and he puts that on, I'm like, all right, well, well we got to go back and fix everything yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> do y'all go in and actually on the computer and tap every hit in or do you like play on like a keyboard or do you play on a mini kit? Because so, I've tracked on the mini kit and then did the humanization and it fucked it. It like took all yeah. my shit and it just made it like completely wrong. So <laughs> Kellen like, is Kellen's kind of like a wizard, um, uh -huh. and he just goes and he puts everything in like, but he's fast. Yeah, he goes in and he's like, but you get comfortable with it, you know, and copy paste is your best friend. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. yeah. No, I, I had a. I remember one time. Actually, one time we we called you in to do do drums for one of the songs that uh, we were like writing. Our, our drummer was like had this track for like so long and i'm just like i just need something man like to to, <laughs> to try to get some scratch drums but we got jonathan to come in and, and help and i remember really, you sat down for like it couldn't have been like more than an hour it might have been it like pretty quick yeah half an hour and he was like there you go and i was like it was just he was just he was trying to type it i think just dj was faster at dj had a, in the stuff kind of a little bit different setup than i was used to so yeah. he was like honestly bro i'm good at driving this just tell me where to go yeah, yeah. and then just sat there i think like uh, Jesse and I were in the other room, like talking, mm -hmm. and then y'all came back out. He's like, "Oh, like y'all taking a break already?" And he's like, oh, no. "We're done." And I'm like, "What the fuck? How do you like see that?" And then I hear, it, and I'm like, "This is good. What the shit?" Like, <laughs> it took me like half an hour. It gets real easy when you just like figure out the skeleton pattern, mm -hmm. and you're like, "Okay, repeat four times," and then you go to the next section, and this is the next pattern. Repeat 
four times. Yeah. And then you can go back to that last section. And you're like, oh, that was a verse. Copy, paste. And then you just go in and add fills. And it changes a little. Yeah. A little and it definitely, like, a bell right here. is not as complicated as, like, the Zetabyte stuff or something like that. Oh, my the God. The songs that we were writing. So I'm yeah. like, so goes, all of that stuff, like, Junior hard. actually plays on electric kit and tracks it and then gives it to me and then i just kind of like have to hang on for dear life <laughs> that's a secret right there the zeta bite secret mm. but june is a fucking beast on the drums yeah it, really I'll, I'll show up i filled in for zeta bite a few times you know for john mm. and i'll go to practice and play with him and then we'll uh we'll finish up and june will sit back there and start playing dillinger or something and just be like perfect and then like no he yeah, over modulate into a different time and then like a do fill and then he'll like do this crazy filling and then it's a fast but i'm like how the fuck why aren't you playing drums you no know? Like, i gotta play guitar junior can easily like, play guitar <laughs> yeah i know june can easily play all any he'll instrument outplay. in the band because he's a multi-instrumental he does the I was vocals, saying, like he guitar. does vocals guitars he could if he could clone himself he could be a one-man band easily yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, Straight up. I wish I could still play guitar because I started as a guitarist before I actually played drums. And if I just kept playing guitar, then I could have also done the same thing because then I would have played guitar, Doing drums, both. and vocals. Dewey, yeah. do you play guitar? Oh, fucking barely, man. I write. <laughs> uh, I'm on the same page, bro. I can go chug, chug, chug. That's about it. <laughs> you can write. You've written some songs. Enough. Yeah. I, I've on the bleak on the new bleak record. Uh, so on the full on the last record I wrote four or five of the songs and they were just like bad skeletons that whams like rewrote and then on the new one it was a little more uh divided like a little more split up even yeah, like here, but i, I, I can this. write like bar chord shit like but i'm not I, by no means am i a guitarist so, so didn't you have weren't you part of the writing in god for as well didn't you do a lot of that one I mean, I'm a part of the writing for, like, almost every song, for sure. But, like, going forward, like, now that we know what we want to set, like, whenever we were figuring out our sound, I was, like, a lot more hands-on with a guitar, like, trying to, like, come up with ideas for everybody. Or not for everybody, but with everybody. But now, like, Whams and Wavy and Thad, like, they, we all know, like, what we want for Bleak. And so... uh Nine times out of ten, they'll send a demo, and I'll be like, yeah, that's good. We're just going to use that. Do you ever um, come up with lyrics and vocal rhythms and melodies? Yes. More more than anything, like, uh, hey, Caleb and Wavy and I um, have a group chat where we, dude, it, it looks like a fucking schizo post in there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll pull up, uh, like, we'll get off work. And we'll go to Wavy's house at like, I don't know, nine at night. And then we just work until four in the morning um, after like Wams sends us an instrumental that he finishes. And we'll just sit in the studio and try to like come up with like verses and like lyric, like what the concept of like the song is going to be about. And so like we'll just send like a sentence and then we send it to that group chat. And so we're all in the group chat sitting next to each other. But we're all reading the same thing, and we're like, okay, that could be cool. And then we all, like, try to, like, send our own things. And so, like, writing the new record, like, if you looked at the group chat that Caleb and Wavy and I are in, like, it looks psychopathic in there, bro. <laughs> that's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. So that's how, that's how we wrote all of the lyrics and stuff for the new one. Yeah, dude, that's actually wow. more common than you think, bro. A lot of drummers end up writing a lot of the lyrics for their bands you know, and stuff. Really? I was going to say, really? I do too, yeah. My first hardcore band, oh man, they're going to hate me for bringing it up. <laughs> Seal Breaker. Um, before Robbie was our vocalist, uh, we had somebody else doing it, and we were tracking at JoJo's, and we did um, <clears throat> drums and everything already, and it was just vocals left. And this guy went in the vocal booth and just screamed just like just growled basically just ah, rah, 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 rah. and then he was like all right i i think i was saying something like this you could probably fit Bro, these words in there hold on hold on do you know I why i was saying something do you know like why this? he was not sure because he couldn't read his own handwriting bro no, bro he didn't have lyrics he went in there and he's like i'm just gonna go freestyle some <laughs> some vocals or patterns and rhythms and we can just try to put words to it literally and so i 
We were sitting there just like face palms. <laughs> Not at the like studio, face, man. Like our palms <laughs> threw our face fully, just like really upset. We went outside, and I, I, I told her I just wrote like eighty five percent of those lyrics. And then we got Robbie in the band, and he made it so much yeah. better. Yeah. And that was his first hardcore band as well. So it was, it was fucking sick. Which that's fucking crazy. Is <laughs> it somehow progressed over to a gagging order now? So that's epic. Yeah. yeah. To have, I mean, that, taking on more. I think once you get established, like with your band and like understanding each other, right? Then it's you're more at liberty to try like other stuff that you're not. Yeah. Again, as a drummer, like, oh, what if you did this on guitar? Because everyone learns how to. Once you learn how to communicate with each other, then I can say something that if I said it to a stranger, like they're not gonna understand what the fuck I'm saying. But oh, yeah. since we've been in a band forever, like, oh, I can like hum something to you or just like play with them. Yeah. Like, okay, maybe I can figure this out. Oh, dude, I got voice memos on voice memos on voice memos. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> I was like, figure this out. This is what I have. Yeah. Like, just listen to this. Um, yeah, but in, oh, damn it, where was I going? I completely fucking lost it. You were saying, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Writing stuff. Yeah, that, that's one thing with like, it's funny, like with me, like, instead of going multi town I tried everything because like, I had a kit in my, in my room. I think I was in, maybe like a freshman in high school, and I was just like, drums is really cool. I'm going to buy a kit. So I just went to guitar. So I think I had like a job and had nothing that I had to pay for, so I just had money. Yeah. And I'm just like, fuck it. A room. And it's like, it was like my bed and the drum set, and that's all that fit in there. Yeah. And I like, I would play along to songs like, this is fun, but like, I I just cannot control my individual limbs like together. I as much And I like sat there. Bro, and like, getting two limbs get to this. cooperate is enough. Now getting all four of them. Yeah. Play. Cause yeah, I was like, I can do this. I go, I can't do shit over yeah. here. Like my foot just wasn't having it. But I did that with, with guitar. Like, cause I grew up learning how to play classical guitar. And then I learned how to play like flamenco guitar. And I was like, this will translate. I'll get an electric and like join a band. And I did it. I bought an electric guitar and was just like, I'm in a band now. Like, that's how the transition moved. And then couldn't play shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, didn't, I, I never took the time to learn. I would just like try stuff. Um, what do you mean I have to down pick? Yeah. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so you down pick everything in the studio. And then, yeah, I remember when we re- went to record, that's what they were yelling at us Absolutely about. about. Was like, down pick everything. Like, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Take a note from Papa Hetfield. But, but I do remember like that. I, but once I just settled in on like just trying to do vocals and be a vocalist then i would once i got like my band established we were i was more influential in like being like okay like let's see if i can understand how to help write this guitar part and then like i was like oh you can actually can contribute even though i don't play that like there's a way like to communicate to keep writing stuff like outside of what you primarily do mm-hmm. um but yeah it's fucking cool that like mostly like all i do you and you're saying you do lyrics too right uh i do i try and get my hand in writing as much as I can. I can't I can't actually really play or comprehend guitar that much at all, but mm. recently I was working on a demo and I was like, fuck it, bro, give me the MIDI. And I messed around with it. Mm. And when I gave it back to him, he was like, some things are messed up, but I see what you did here. And like, they made sense to them. Because yeah. I have guitar parts in my head usually, mm. especially when I write we all like do, right? skeletons oh, yeah. of songs. Because I also, out. I like to like start out songs and make structures and fuck with structures of already started songs too. And do all that but i never really i'm never able to completely be like this is what the guitar should sound like yeah um and it was it was like that with vocals for a little bit and i actually kind of got more into doing clean stuff too um but i've just tried to like give my opinion or give my say in as much as i can even when i can't with guitar and that's like a big big piece of writing yeah um i think that's a i think that's one of the things with uh people using MIDI and just having access to more like MIDI instruments and being able to record stuff on yourself. It's people like, I, mean, I can't physically play this on the guitar, but I can write it. Like once you become like, once you get established and learn how to be a musician, you understand it in all like, you understand timing, you understand what stuff sounds like, what sounds good together. Like you have an ear for it. So if it, if you facilitate it with yourself by just being like, I can go on the computer and click like, what chords do I need here? What can I input your timing? You don't have to worry about the actual physical aspect. Like, oh, how do I play this? You can still create like skeletons and even like whole songs. And you, I mean, because Jonathan, like, I mean, you didn't mention it before, but you've, I mean, you have like some solo stuff that you were like yeah, working on. I do have like four or five songs I'm literally sitting on. It was just me. Like, I sung the guitar riffs and I, I you know, had, had June literally like finger them out. I was like, yeah, that's literally what I sung to you. Awesome. And, like, have them stacked up. I still got to work on that shit. Just we started touring real heavy with Unity. You know what I mean? So, like, I, the time in between got smaller and smaller and smaller. I mean, literally, the when we went from Silverstein to Loth, we were home for like two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have much time sometimes. So um, yeah, I think that's some more of my goals this year. Just like slowly start inching to put that stuff out. Cause so so what really like drove you to really like oh I want to 
write my own stuff. Honestly, bro, I just wanted some shit that would, like, kick you in the nuts. Like, literally, bro. <laughs> Which is crazy, because, like, as I was thinking about doing that shit, Josh Miller comes out with Darko, and I'm like, ah, I beat me to it. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's not the same thing, but, like, it was a very similar idea. So, like, no, that's really fucking dope. If anything, it just shows you that it's possible. Yeah. It's just him and Tom Barber, you know what I mean? And he's doing all shit. And he wasn't, like, an amazing guitar player when he started either, you know what I mean? Yeah, obviously, it's mostly rhythmical, but, like, dude, he's got that shit going, bro. You know what I mean? I wish I could play guitar, like, actually write some I'm shit. I'm still working I, on it, too, man. I'll like, be sitting trying. on the toilet just singing some parts to myself. <laughs> like, if I lay some drums down and I sent it to somebody, they're not even going to play Bro, it. have y'all ever mm-hmm. tried to record, you know, because you don't get to choose when inspiration strikes. So have y'all ever been somewhere trying to record a voice memo and say, I want to remember this, but, like, you're in public or at work or something? Like, happened to me like I hope ago. to God that nobody <laughs> hears me go, don't, don't, ooh, don't, don't, ooh, don't, ooh, don't, ooh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> This guy's crazy. Oh, man. Like, <laughs> it wasn't that bad the last time it happened. My mom was, she works from home, and I was in the living room, and me and Omar were starting this little Snapcase side project. Sounds like Snapcase. <laughs> and um, we're kind of working on this track, and it feels like it's got the idea there. We're just missing some transitions. And I, I was sitting there. My mom's, like, answering calls, and I'm, like, trying to do it real quietly. And I go, <laughs> I'm hearing a part that kind of goes... Bam, dum, bam, dum, dum. And she's like looking around her computer, like, "What are you doing?" Like, Don't even look. And she's yeah. like, "I already know." <laughs> it's just the quick. I realize that it's the quickest way to get ideas down. Nope. Just yeah. be like, "Oh, like you're saying, whenever you're like, it's in your head." And I will. I've lost so many things to be like, I'll just record it when I'm like on the car ride home. Yeah, or three minutes later, that. it's gone, and bro. it's gone. It's just like, yeah, like, um, and I need to hear because, like, it, it, sometimes it would happen like in the middle of the night or like in a dream or something so I would get up and record it not all of those were winners like I would wake up and be like I don't know what the fuck I was thinking but (laughs) but there's a lot of times where like I would have like vocal memories in head or be like or something I'm like this makes sense it's not fully there but if I don't get it down you're like I don't because it's usually it was I was usually like working or something when I I used to work for a bank and there was like a separate little conference room so I would just always just like get up on my desk go in there and be like all right Record really fast. I'm like, all right, let's go. And then just go back. And I'm like, what the fuck yeah, are you right. doing in there all the time? And I was like, it just, That's it's just, it's work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, shit. try to run, pop in the bathroom or the deep freezer or whatever. You know what I mean? Just like anywhere where I can get away just for a second. You know what I mean? And do mm-hmm. that stuff. Um, yeah, you can't just like clock in and be like, all right, now let's, let's think about this. And no, as I was saying, you don't get to choose like, when yeah. inspiration strikes. I'm and literally on the toilet or in the shower. It's and in it's the like, most inconvenient places. There it is. And it pops in my head. I've had that happen one time where I actually like, sat down and wrote something because I was like, we're going to do this I'm right gonna do now. This, yeah. Like, but it, it you it, gotta be in never, the moment, like yeah. in the mindset like, for that type of shit. I think it's just like, cause I was like, I think I have something and I had like one line to write and I'm like, fuck it. Today's the day. And I just mm-hmm. sat down and like wrote the whole song, like lyrics and vocal melodies and everything. I'm like, okay, it's done. And like, <laughs> I think we ended up tweaking like a few things, but I'm like, yeah. okay, that was the only time I sat down and did it. But for the most part, it's always like random stuff like that. And like, the for me like the car always the car like it's yes, always like me yeah, just driving absolutely repeating shit no if no one's in there then i'm playing like because we once once we were able to just like demo tracks and send each other shit then i'm like that shit's on loop dude yep. like i'm uh-huh. this song is memorized by the time we hate like we practice again yeah um which is, is which is what i like about like being able to do that now that it's like oh i have an idea everyone gets the track i'm like all right so by the time you get to practice you should at least know what the base structure of right, this yeah. is. You know what I mean? Like and not coming into How's this it. go? <laughs> Bro, uh, I I'll, I'll call him out now but uh, my old drummer uh, his name is Eddie. He plays uh he plays right now for He played for Instinct for a little bit and then he he's playing for Treehouse right now. But that was the thing with us that we were like I would always get mad at him. I was like, "We have the track." Then he's like, "Okay, what part goes next?" I'm like, "Nah, baby, we have this." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's like we were all we were on the way out. So yeah. it, it it is what it is, but uh, but you, I do, I do like that. I do like the fact that like most time, like because you can record demos and stuff. Like by the time you get to practice, you're like, at least I know where to go. Dude. Like you were saying, like I know the basic. Maybe I just follow like the guitar on this, part, yeah. and then we'll work things out in between. You know, but you at least know structures. Dude, something I'm mad grateful for, like having an iPhone in general. It's so great for music stuff. You know what I mean? Sending, you can send a wave file to somebody, and they can listen to it in a text message, and it's yeah. perfectly clear. Oh yeah. But something I recently started doing was like I'll write. I do have, like, a lot of times where vocal melodies and hooks and choruses come in my head. So I'll write them down, but then later I'll come back and I don't remember how the melody went. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. Well, you can import a voice memo into the note oh, in yeah, the yeah, same yeah. place. I so, yeah, that, now man. I can remember how this goes and how I wrote it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So something I'm mad grateful for. Yeah, bro. You would say something about 
being in the car and doing yeah. that and writing. Well, uh, my neighbor who was homeschooled, he, his radio would go out. And so that didn't fucking stop us because we would just literally make it up and just singing random noises and parts, roll the windows down and scare the fuck out of people. <laughs> we would just be like full, bl- like flailing our voices. <laughs> but <clears throat> we would write some crazy shit like that. I, we never made music out of it, but... <laughs> you wrote it, though? Yeah, in the car, though. It was just creative. I don't know. Yeah, in the car is one of my favorite just places to listen to music in general. Because yeah. it's, it's most... I don't know. I, uh, I've been talking about this with a few people, but, like, I don't have specific moments that I get to just sit down and listen to music, like, exactly. anymore. Like, and just do that. Like, I car always... It's literally always time. doing something. But car, like, I'm just driving. I can just put something on and listen to. Because I like listening to full projects like at a time like a, as an album i i do like and, and i do both but for the most part i think i enjoy a little bit more being able to sit down like oh i want to listen to like all this stuff to figure out like how it works like that's what happened when i listened to like the latest from joy album like that album like flows so nicely together like song to song i thought it was just six songs when I, I i walked home i was walking home from school one day and i put it on for the first time and it was after i had seen you guys play with silent planet at southside music hall and it was probably like the day after, to be fair. I put it on, and I saw it was 10 tracks, and I saw it was short, I was like, okay. And then by the time it was over, I was just like, wait, I thought there was like five or six more tracks. <laughs> I, <laughs> didn't, it, yeah. I didn't know that it was transitioning at all. Yeah, yeah, I, I love when albums do it, but I, I love having the time. But yeah, Car, um, luckily now, like I, I work in a different place where they like I can literally listen to music the whole time I'm working. Oh, yeah. And I didn't know how much like that would change my like outlook on like just work, but I'm just yeah, like... Bro. Bro, like, I just, like, play, like, oh, what do I want to listen to today? Like, play that whole thing. It's it's so fucking cool. But, yeah, like, having moments. But the car, for me, has always been where I listen to music and where I've written a lot of stuff. Just because it's the... I feel like even, like, here at the house, like, belting loud as fuck. Even when no one's here, like, it's still, like, echoey. And I'm, like, in the car, I'm, like, there's noise outside, so, like, no one gives a fuck. Except for, like, the people pulling up next to me at a stop or whatever, just seeing me fucking, like, yelling and screaming. Um, But, yeah, I just, I don't know. Creatively, that's just where it works for me. Like, sometimes that's, like, what quiets my mind enough to be like, all right, let's do something. Um, uh, Just to touch on, like, touring, like, uh, everybody's kind of toured, done a little run. Have you, like, any yet? doing my first tour in, like, July. Really? Nice, bro. Sick. Who's it with? Oh, let's go, man. My own band, Last Night of Solace. We're booking it out and shit. Sick. All right. Um, yeah, this boy's on tour right now. He's on tour. Oh, right yeah. Now. Speaking <laughs> of, uh, yeah, man. he's already doing it. Yeah, y'all done some 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 big stuff, and and just do it. Just going on around on the road is something that like I've never done. So I'm always fascinated to hear like about people's stories about going out. Um, I got a crazy story. Oh, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> I knew someone uh, was having one. And it's a Houston special. Oh, <laughs> baby. Uh, Scrooston, baby. Scrooston. <laughs> <laughs> um. <clears throat> We were, Deep Incision was on tour with Primitive Rage. Once a year, we do a run with them. Um, this was great. We played at Ojman, and we decided to get, like, a motel, not a hotel. We, we were like, let's go super cheap. Um, let's just save all that money, because we got to drive all the way to Kansas next. Mm. And um, not that bad of a drive. But anyways, <laughs> we got this cheap-ass motel, and we're sharing we're rooms next door to each other. Our, do- our doors are next to each other. And we're putting our keys at the same time. Primitive Rage is on the left. We're on the right. And as they go to turn their key, a lady from the inside their their room opens the door and is like, Oh, is this y'all's room? Sorry, let me grab my stuff. <laughs> what? <laughs> It was straight up a prostitute. Oh, straight up no. a prostitute was just chilling, like squatted up in their room. So they, they were like, can we get new sheets? And they got new sheets, but they only gave them sheets for the bed that, that she was on. So, yeah. Mm. Oh, dude. And it was so humid That's and the bad. floor was tile. So, like, it felt like it was constantly wet. It was crazy. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of the tour experience, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've like done holes them. You're trying to make you're kind of the worst. Shit. The worst shit kind of makes makes it the tour. You know, you get home. Oh, you're bro. like, oh, I survived. That was fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you experience shit like that. And you're like, hey, bro, sleeping in a van ain't that bad. Bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, true. since my beloved, we did 30 hours straight all the way up to Boston or not or Massachusetts. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, that sucked. It was rough, <laughs> and because we were all of car. us, every seat was taken except the back two seats which was full of gear and like piled over the other seat 30 hours but i would i would do it again absolutely yeah, no, absolutely yeah. bro 
What about you? Y'all got some crazy stories? Well, I think... <laughs> I mean, I don't really have a crazy story, but speaking of, like, every seat being taken in a van... Yeah. Um, I went on the road. I filled in for Kurama. Uh, oh, okay. like, I was on this run, too. Yeah. I wasn't in their van, thank God. <laughs> no, there, there would have been... We would have been sitting in each other's laps, because it was, like... Yeah. Uh, like half of Ballista and then all of Kurama and then Ging was our driver. And um, yeah, there was only one empty seat the entire oh time. Like all of those drives, I think minimum, the shortest drive was like 10 hours. So we were just mm. sitting in there like sardines, just just chilling. Uh, right. Yeah, I think I fell asleep on Tucker's shoulder. <laughs> they also had a trailer because the whole car was full. So yeah. they had to go extra slow. And then on the way to Colorado, there oh was God. ice across the yeah. highway. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's yeah the uh, the unexpectedness of like tour life of figuring it out is like, I guess what maybe just makes after the fact once you get home and like you survive it you're like fuck it I I fucking did it and you always end up with like it's a crazy ass story but in the moment it might suck but like later on like well you know we made it through and we're still here I I think it really tests to bro, see like do you want to do this shit I think that's what you've always not said. to put my poor boy Dewey on the spot but literally bro their shit broke down like the second day of this yeah. tour they're on right now fuck. Dog, dog, our transmission hit the bed on a bridge. <laughs> oh, no. And, oh. Uh, yeah, we were stuck there for a couple hours. I'm in a rental right now, bro. Oh, really? So, yeah. It's nicer than my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's... Dude, we're, we're just, like, getting up and standing up in this shit just because we can, because it's yeah. so tall. <laughs> just getting up and standing up. <laughs> Uh, yeah, man, it's a uh, yeah, yeah. We're, we're we're we got like two hammocks in here and shit right now. Hammocks? Yeah, bro. We uh we had a bunk. We all had like a perfect setup, perfect situation in our other van. We had bunks, a trench, everything. Everybody could sleep comfortably. And um, whenever it broke down, we had to find a rental. Our van is sitting at Kendrick Kendrick's house right now. Uh, and, um, we picked this fucking thing up and I'm just going to show you really quick. Actually, hold on. Let me climb back here. (laughs) Yeah, it's perfect. We took out, we took out one of the benches and then we took out a bunch of seats, but for some reason there's like seats that are screwed into the frame. Yeah, it's like the little tiny chairs on the left. Of the van? Yeah. How do I flip this thing? Here we go. So this is our bedroom right now. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's like anti. Problem. It feels like anti homeless architecture in here because there's like these seats right here that just don't come out, and so we could barely fit our mattresses down here. So, and like it's completely like before we got the hammocks, it was completely unlivable because these fucking stupid seats that are bolted into the uh, yeah. the frame. Yeah. How many days have y'all been in that rental? Dude, this is week three. Uh, is, how's the smell? <laughs> um, we got this bad boy right here that's doing the trick. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if y'all caught what he said. He said anti-homeless architecture, like, you know, on the park benches? Yeah. Put the, yeah. put the bars and stuff so they can't uh, sleep yeah. on them? Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, dude, literally, like, Kyle sleeps here. I sleep here. Blake is so tall that he has to sleep from right there all the way down to right yeah, here. Yeah, no, bro. He's a big man. Uh, and then somebody else sleeps right here, and Blake's feet are always in their stomach. And then Aesop sleeps on the bench because she can fit here. Yeah. I yeah. have my shoes all over her bed right now. I'm sorry, Aesop. <laughs> um, and then Jake hates sleeping across the front, and so he'll literally put his head right here and his feet up in the chair. Yeah. Sleeping across the front is the worst. Oh, my God. The worst is sleeping across the front. Dude, I fuck with it. I like sleeping. (laughs) Hey, if you figure out the secret, bro, like, you just got to put something to level out that little gap in the middle, you know? Yeah. Even then, though. That's like, you got to, like, take turns in the bad spot every now and then. (laughs) At least the first bit of experience that I'm going to get touring, I'm going to be small so I can fit anywhere and I'll just be comfortable. That's yeah. a, you know that's, that's a good thing. Uh, what's Not like my since y'all have all like toured? Like what's what's some advice y'all would give like Andy on this first tour? Bro, change your socks, please. Good <laughs> God. Uh, yeah, no, bring extra pairs of socks and underwear for sure. Um, if you can bring a pair of underwear every day of tour, you don't know. Definitely bring. I a am pillow. buying. I am just buying underwear and socks before I go. Mm-hmm. I'm just buying extra clothes because I don't up. even have a lot of clothes. I have to do laundry. Like 
constantly. You're not uh, going to okay, get that opportunity on the road. The I just got to buy more. I just got to buy more because on tour, it's going to be so much harder. The yeah. most important thing you need on tour is it's a like a car charger adapter, and then it comes out, and it's got like two or three outlets, an, an and then it's got inverter, multiple yeah. USB plugs. Everybody can charge their shit. Yep. while you're moving or somebody can be working on their laptop you know yeah. what i'm saying like yeah. there's a with unity like you know sometimes like if you're sitting in the back and you need somebody to flip that shit on the front yeah and I'm like hey bro can you please turn on that so we literally just go inverter, <laughs> <laughs> Harder, inverter. <laughs> but uh yeah when i was on tour with lost in separation um uh, Malad and Jake both had to work, and so while we're moving on the on the van, Jake's back there with his like work glasses on. He's answering phone calls and on his <laughs> laptop. Or like we'll wake up in the hotel, it'll be like seven a.m. and he's over there in the corner with his coffee and like working. He's like, "What's up, bro?" It's <laughs> so crazy because then he gets on stage and he does his fucking like spins and shit. He gets all crazy with it. And then he wakes up in the morning. But yeah, <laughs> inverter, pillow, clothes. Yeah. Yeah. Serious. Yeah. Fitness said, membership. Granola bars. Yeah, I want to correct that's myself. Earlier when I said a pair of underwear every day, I meant to say two pairs every day. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was gonna say that's normal. Right? Gonna, yeah, bare minimum. <laughs> More deodorant. Yeah, no, yeah, I always, deodorant too. Deodorant. I like. I would say the most separate thing for, for us has been. That's a, oh shit. Go for it, dude. My bad. Yeah, <laughs> no, go for it. Everybody cuts in and out. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to uh, talk over anybody. My bad. Uh. The uh, the most important thing I think is taking care of yourself, like eating right, because uh, with that comes good mental, yeah, yeah, uh, good mental stuff. And it when it, you're on the road, uh, you start to really beat yourself up physically and mentally. So, like whatever the smallest things you can, whether it's like just. If you're saving money for tour, don't spend it on stupid shit. Eat right. Take care of yourself. Uh, yeah, as much no, as you possibly can. I got you. No gas station sushi. God. Oh, God. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> no, I love salmon. Never. Don't Never do it. Actually, salmon. no. That's, sometimes that shit's good, bro. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> don't knock it till you try it, baby. No. Um, I need to get my ha- take care of yourself. In the habit of actually eating it, it, in the that's all that matters. Already. You'll go. It, it'll take take you so far. You know, absolutely. That's one thing uh, with everybody I've seen, like everybody's tour stories, everybody just showing like, oh, like how they're sleeping and stuff. Like, just know, like if a band comes to your town, like they fucking they love doing this shit. Like, because otherwise, like who's putting themselves like in in situations like this to do this? It's because they love like y'all love playing like y'all love playing music. The feeling of actually being on that stage is way fucking better. Yeah. So, yeah. Anytime like a band's coming through and you have the opportunity to see them like fucking take it, man. Yeah, um, supporting a local band didn't really hit me until I was out on the road Mm -hmm. or, like, playing out of town. It's like, yeah, we paid to come out here, and I hope these people really like us. And if they buy some shit, then we can get home, like, comfortably. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, at that moment, it was like, around then, it was like, oh, I need, this makes sense. I can support people in a better way. That's what, I mean, when you, and that's, even, like, when we, when we started, like, Noise Rise started being, like, more more behind the curtain because we we'd all like played in bands and stuff so we knew a little bit but then like seeing a little bit more oh like where does you know ticket sales go like what do bands really need like oh some bands barely like the guarantee they're getting is barely just enough to get here and then like they need to move on to or and get here and eat maybe yeah, man. yeah. You know? so that's why like man that's why i i feel bad that we're losing we're losing the post because with the post we had a lot of control so we usually could like give a lot of touring bands like food and everything since they had it but um, shit like that is hard, like, uh, cause we had, I think even one of the touring bands we had one time when we could, we like let them stay, like they stayed here like uh, for a night. Uh, but little shit. Cause like all that matters. Like if you buy a shirt, yeah, that's literally like, Oh, we can eat tomorrow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of whatever, you know, or, or figuring shit out on the fly. Um, but yeah. that's when I started realizing what merch was, what like, uh, anything that you can contribute yeah, like on the road. It's not just like, Oh, it's, we're not just selling a shirt and making money. It's that's like, a band saving grace for sure, bro. Yeah. Yeah. In SMB, especially driving 30 hours, playing th- two or three shows and then driving back, um, we ate a lot of, like, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> it is what it is, bro. Yeah. Sure. It is Groceries, it is. baby. Groceries. Groceries. Bananas. Yeah, that's true. Bananas. 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 Bananas go hard. It's so cheap. And oftentimes, bro, the ones at, like, 7-Eleven, whatever, are, like, perfectly ripe to eat, like, right there. You don't have to wait for them. And it's great right before a set. Yeah. To stop like, the yeah. Potassium, bro. Yeah. 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 For reals. Potassium. You know, you actually get a... A stronger source of potassium from oranges than you do bananas. 
Really? Wild, yeah. Shit. Tess who? Uh, my mom. But, but she was, <laughs> yeah, when she went to the hospital and found out she was potassium deficient, they told her. <laughs> they were like, yeah, you can eat bananas, but you're allergic to those. Because she, uh, yeah, she's allergic to bananas. So it was like, hey, you can actually eat oranges and they give you more potassium. Yeah. Damn, potassium is always yellow in my head because of bananas. You don't fuck my world up. <laughs> Speaking of fucking my world up, you know what fucking happened today? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Right, Let's tell right, him, John. Let's tell him, John. Yo, so, Osiel and I went to go work out before this, right? Start our day right, bro. Get the endorphins flowing and stuff. We had a great workout. It was sick. Took a shower at the gym. It was all good. He's like, hey, follow me back to the house, and then we'll go to QT and get those drinks and stuff. So, we're going, right? Following home. And uh, I lost him once. I split off because I wasn't paying attention. I met back up. Followed <laughs> that, him again. That comes into play later. So, we come in on one of those. You know when you're getting off the highway, and then you're going to turn onto the street, and it's like a little curve right you gotta wait to see if traffic's coming he's in front of me i'm right here when i get to here i look over my shoulder to make sure that i'm good and i thought he had started rolling he did not boy so i took my foot off the gas pressed it <laughs> oh shit i was like no fuck. bro i can see him in the mirror going <laughs> so then i'm like oh but i i look at the car like okay it doesn't look like any visible damage or whatever so we just keep driving right and we go back to the house Gets out of the car and he busts out laughing, bro. I, you know, I'm embarrassed as fuck. Like, damn, bro, I just hit him from behind. It was a love tap, but like still, you know, it's embarrassing. So he gets like laughing and he was like, dude, you know why I'm laughing so hard? Because every time I look back in the mirror and all I seen was your paper plate twerkle hanging in the oh fucking thing. <laughs> like I would calm down and I would like look back and I'm like bust out laughing again. <laughs> The license plate is just like hanging like this. I'm uh, like, bro. And I get out of the car. I can't stop laughing. I'm like, holy uh, shit. I felt I, and I look at the car. The car, like, it's, it's I fine. Mean, it's, it's fine. It doesn't yeah. have anything. I'm just like laughing my ass off. And then we're just like, well, we were driving to QT. And I'm like, hey, bro, when does Unity go back out? Because my neck's like starting to hurt a little bit. <laughs> He's like, hey, I'll be good on this one, right? He's yeah. Like, y'all just got back, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, that shit was so, I just couldn't stop laughing like I had yeah. no concern of like yeah. oh what's my car like I didn't even stop I kept driving all the way back because I couldn't stop laughing dude I'm like <laughs> I, I swear that shit was so fucking funny like I'm like God, <laughs> it would only happen to fucking Jonathan yeah, no. oh fuck now he literally goes he, to the, he, when it happened he said he looked back to see who it was and it was me and he was I know Jonathan <laughs> <laughs> I said it in, I went in Spanish I was like I know Jonathan <laughs> <laughs> I kept uh, trying to look back to see what his like mood was because I know I was laughing, I was but I kept looking. He's just like, <laughs> I was like, oh, he feels bad. Yeah, um, oh, that's great. So hey, that's I, I got I got a lot of people here with Yo, me. What's hey! going on? Hold on, let me disconnect. Oh, my Hold on. Oh. Say what's up, Flipskis. Hello, right. everybody. What up? Hey, 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 what up? What y'all eating? Yo, yo. What's good? Oh, yeah. What up? It's, it's team. Is From that gas Georgia. station sushi? What's that? I go, is that gas station sushi? Oh, dude. Yeah, we're about to fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> you about to be fucked up. <laughs> oh, All right. I will sushi. keep it so honest. I have to leave to go load in now. Yeah, actually, yeah, we're the- we're actually like approaching the end of this. Like we're we're almost at an hour and a half like, right now. So, uh, no, thank you so much for hanging out. Do we really, bro, really, really love appreciate you, it? Thank you, bro. Really bro, appreciate dude, it. Love you guys. It we'll see you soon. No cure. 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 <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys later. See you, awesome. bud. Bye. While while we're talking about gas station sushi again, and we're talking about touring, I don't know if I mentioned I got. Food poisoning on that tour uh. with Boston Separation, and that was rough. It was like a Waffle House in between Indiana and Ohio, and I ate it. It was fine, and then we like I woke up in Columbus, Ohio, at the Walmart we were sleeping in uh, the parking lot. You were peeing <laughs> and I, out your butt. I was no, I was, <laughs> I was shitting out my mouth. Dude. I was like, what, what degree of like? Because I've had like two like types of food poisoning, and one is like, oh, you're like stuck on the toilet all day, and the worst one is the pain one for me. It I'm was just like fucking. It was horrible. Yelling. I wasn't shitting, thank God. Um, I w- I flung the door open. It was just like spewing, spewing the shit out, and I was like, y'all, we got to move the van. Y'all can't even get out. And like, what are you talking about? And I was like, I'm, I'm extremely sick right now. And so then we showed up to the venue. I loaded in, set up, I sound checked, and I sound checked with like my sleeping shades on my face. There's like a picture of me just like slumped over, going cut. 
Cut. Cut. That's one thing Dude. to guarantee to take it the fuck yeah. out of you. I had a fucking puke bucket next to my hi hat, bro. And I played that shit. And thank thank God I didn't need to shit that whole time. It was just throwing it up. Cause like two or three days later when we were in Pennsylvania, Andrew Hick, he got the food poisoning. Oh no. Yeah, and he got the shit version, so Yeah. And that one sucks. Yeah, yeah. dude, I, I know that pain all too well, bro. I'll try to condense this quick. Um we were playing in Portugal. We were on that tour with these nuts in the Acacia strain and Brothers Till We Die. Um and we had played Madrid the day before and during the middle of the night, bro, I just got the spins, like, nasty. And, like, I'd already been on that bus for weeks, so, like, I know I was used to it. It's not the bus that was making me like that. I was like, what's going on, bro? And I sat up, and I was like, oh, no, I gotta go to the bathroom. Go down there, and I throw up. Boom, on the toilet, I'm like, fuck, bro. Well, let me go get my toothbrush so I can go back to sleep. And I go up, and my photographer's bunk is open. And it's, like, 3 a.m., and she's not in there. I'm like, where'd she go? I go back down to meet her, open the door. She's got to throw up on her face. I'm like, oh, no, you too! So we both, like, just kind of, like... We braced ourselves to go back to bed, and then I woke up again, like, 7 a.m., bro, and I had, like, oh, shit, I gotta go. Run, I, like, swing down the stairs on the bar, <laughs> jump down, the bus door was already open, and there was some grass right there, so, like, thank God we're stopped. Ran out, threw up all over the place, right? I turn around, the Acacia Strain's down there having breakfast, right there, bro. Right? <laughs> no, I'm, like, I'm in my underwear, bro, I'm, like, I'm, I'm so sorry. He goes... Hey, buddy, feeling all right? And I'm like, honestly, no. And they're like, join the club. Half the tour has got what you got. I'm like, oh my god. Whoa. Oh, so fuck. when we get to the venue in Portugal, it's not open yet for another two hours. So they can't even plug up the power to the bus to turn the AC on. So I'm literally there uh, cooking in the sunlight inside the van, into the bus. I got like a trash bag as a bib, bro, just like at all times ready. Poor Kendrick like went in, got me some medicine and stuff, but uh. I went. To, I tried to go to sleep to burn it off, and I'll peeling up a pool of sweat. It woke me up like ten minutes before a sound check. Do you need to come check, bro? I'm like, I can try. Waddled my ass into the fucking place. Sound check. Shit myself on the last note. <laughs> on the last. Note. Yeah, so literally like no, we're done. No. Like no, no, so I'm done. So <laughs> got up, went to go shower, then went back to sleep. Right. Then Kendrick comes again, wakes me up about 15 minutes before the set, and he goes, hey, Bubba, it's time to play. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Luckily, I went inside, sweating profusely. He's like, did you just play? I'm like, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I made it the whole set without throwing up or shitting. I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah, God. when I played, I had the puke bucket, didn't use it. This is a weird phenomenon, I guess. I experienced this when I, I've had the flu and sat down and played drums perfectly fine. Mm. All day, could not move, do anything, and I just was like, I want to play drums. I want to play drums. I'm gonna. So mm. I sat down, and I fucking played and felt completely normal. Obviously, when I finished, it just like, wow, you. You know, <laughs> and I died, but... um. You displaced that pain temporarily. Yeah, I, I took <laughs> all of that, and I just like kind of set it, it side, side stage, and I was just like, give me a minute. And I played the set, and... Lost separation, like you got that dog in you, bro. You gotta play that <laughs> shit. It was probably my worst set on the whole tour, but bro, he's fucking guitar player, Chris. He sent me a picture. But first, he goes, Hey, bro, I just had to get an x ray, and I'm concerned. I was like, Oh, damn, bro, what happened to you? Sends me a picture of some ribs in the x ray, and there's a dog in the inside, right? Like a pit bull. <laughs> you know, they said, I got that dog in me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Cabron, bro. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, that's funny, bro. Yeah, so uh, playing fun, playing sick on tour is not fun. And it's going to happen if you tour out. It will happen. Yeah, especially with, like, the lack it. of sleep you get. Yeah. 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 Sure. That's, what, yeah that's what it is easy, is it? And to that's get one of the with, hardest like, things to come back, bro. Yeah. Like, for Unity, this upcoming tour we got is the first one that we're going to have a driver for. Minus the European ones we didn't drive. But, like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Usually yeah. we're gunning it ourselves, bro. Pulling those 10 to 8 hours in between shows and shit and just, like, switching it off. Whoever's about to kill us, you know? All those European <laughs> venues got... Fucking showers and shit, don't they, though? Mm. No? no? It's not every single one, bro. So you'll get really lucky. But it's more often there than it is here, though, Yes, right? and they feed you every day there, which they don't hear in America. It's kind of crazy. That's yeah. what you were telling me. Like, that's not, like every one of them, like, had yeah, spread it was, like, for a you. Whole, like, and, like, banquet legit spread. fucking banquet spread. Well, sometimes multiple times a day, bro. They definitely feed you dinner. So you're definitely eating twice by the venue, at least, if not three times. That's wow, dope. That's pretty that's fucking cool. sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They take care of... They, Appreciate their musicians over there. And know. then you get to stand side stage and watch Michelle go, oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that was cool. You I get wish fed, I... too. What the fuck? And you get fed, too, bro? Yeah, what the fuck? Damn. 
Yeah, in America here, we got the the whole Planet Fitness thing tied down, bro. Like, it's basically, we that's our home. We basically live yep. in the Planet Fitness parking lot. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yep. And then, like, if at least if there's four of you, if at least three of you got the pack, Black Pass, then you can, you know, yep. usher that last person in, whatever, and then do whatever you need. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly yeah, yeah. what it's we do. The, legit setup. You can go the, fucking shower. You it go beats the $18. Hang out it's like, like, it's a consistent class. shower, and then you might as well work out if you're dragging their ass in there. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. Internet, if you want to fucking just work on something. Wi-Fi. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a bad set. I, I, when people started doing it, I'm like, that's so fucking perfect. Which I wish they would bring up, like, some sort of, like, partnership with musicians. Do you remember, like, Taco Bell did that, like, a while back? Feed with, the Beat. Yeah, right. shit like that. But like, that, unfortunately. No, they did, yeah. But, like, that's I feel like the, like, Planet like, Fitness could way too much like of our that. beat, bro. Hell no. <laughs> yeah. Planet yeah. Fitness should issue, like, some sort of, like, maybe, like, a discounted shit for musicians or whatever. You get cool. a shit ton of people to sign up. Yeah, but then again, I can see them not liking it with, like, some and really then you just bad. got half the parking lot full like of bands a, and trailers, bro. That, and then you get like the Motley Crew band uh, that goes in, they fucking trash the place. Uh, you know yeah. what I mean? That's fair. They or, can they, pick truth. or they show up like just drunk or doing drugs. That's true. But also, I don't really feel like musicians do it that bad anymore. It's not, yeah, dude. Yeah. Like, it's funny. Like movie, it's very different. The now. rock star yeah. lifestyle movies, I think is like. Yeah, God. movies like The Dirt and shit. Like, that's how it used to be. It's uh -huh. not really like that anymore, dude. I feel like because you, you can't really, like, burn all these bridges to. and keep being, like, successful. Yeah. The worst like, oh, thing like, you're you going to see these people. is, like, mm -hmm. oh, they're all smoking a bowl on the bus. Okay, cool. Yeah, Whatever. That's yeah. Fuck. yeah. It's it's fun. exactly. Yeah, I think, I don't know. I think maybe just from my perspective, like, it's been more of, like, uh, a respect thing with people like touring like who you're working with like um i want to come back here so i'm not gonna try to be like absolutely for yeah. the most part like there's, avoid... there's some outliers or whatever but if you want to keep doing this shit then you need yeah you realize it's more of a network that you need because it's not a label yeah. just putting you up and like you can do whatever the fuck you want because yeah. successful. even if there's some type of confrontation with anything in any relationship you have bro like your best bet is to try not to burn that bridge even yeah. if you never use it again, it's good not to burn them, you know? Yeah, so many people know, like, so many people to get you somewhere else or yeah, something bro. else. Yeah, like, yeah. Word spreads fast, bro. Faster yeah. than you can think. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. But, um, that. yeah, dude, thank you guys for fucking being here. This shit was, thanks for having us. It was a little chaotic, but we fucking did it, it awesome. too. Yeah. I've been injured. wanting to do this podcast for so fucking long, so it's just sick. <laughs> I don't know how I'm here. You're here because you earned it because you're doing cool shit. All exactly. right, everybody in yeah. here is doing cool shit, and I want to like say that. like that. That's why when we started like noise ride and whatever doing like our only motto was like we want to do cool shit with cool people, and I love that this is like my own little thing where I'm like, oh, I get to just hang out with people, and like I mean, thank y'all like John introducing me to to y'all and say this is fucking sick. I'm having the time of my life here. Yeah, same. Um, but yeah, uh, episode 100 with all these talented motherfuckers, and we're gonna do 100 more, baby. Yes, sir. Let's you're go. back? Hell yeah. <laughs> if you don't have me. Yes, sir. Bro, you'll be back like a few times before yeah. that. <laughs> we'll figure it out. But um, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. Anything last that you want to plug in? Oh, everybody. Uh, do I'm going to do a quick plug. Yeah. Deep Incision is working on new music and the shit bangs. Um, go check out their shit that they just dropped already. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you for mm -hmm. that. Uh, and since my beloved's got three songs that we should be dropping here in the next couple months, it's yes, our. Right. Last three songs, so oh, yeah, keep that in mind. Ooh. Oh my god, just the mom show right now. Hold on, damn, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a. Oh yeah, and then also <laughs> TMZ. Keep the keep your date free for July seventh. That's gonna be a show that nice. you wanna be at for sure. Secret. I'm gonna plug Dewey since he's not here. Go listen to Bleak. Go listen to No Cure. Absolutely. Bleak just dropped a new EP album on Friday. It mm -hmm. kicks ass. I listened yeah. to it on the way up here. Yeah, that's gas. I still need to finish it. Yeah, it's good. It's though. really good. The last track is probably my favorite. Oh, you got to get through it. Ooh. <laughs> oh, you got to plug in. You got to plug in yourself. Yeah, you got to plug yourself. I, I, I played for From Joy. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. just dropped the record. <laughs> they just did like what? That was three almost days a year ago now. Silent Planet. Did three days yeah, five. we did play. We played a couple shows of Silent Planet. That was kind of life changing, also, because we ne we never played in front of any crowd that large, like. The, the Dallas show, there mm. was it was like a thousand cap room and it yeah, was almost bro. sold out. I wanted to go to that so bad. Unfortunately, I was out of town. I was uh, playing with Jesse's band. It is what it is. And we're playing in Houston. Oh, yeah, but yeah. then I saw a video of y'all playing Rational Gaze. And I was like, <laughs> no! Yeah, yeah we were that like, was bro. the biggest y'all have ever sounded. I mean, like, I've oh, seen y'all in tiny little rooms. Yeah. And I've seen you in, like, established venues here in DFW. But, like... That was crazy. The sound of that venue was awesome. There was a reason I looked up your band like the day after. <laughs> yes, sir. Because yeah. that shit was like hypnotizing in a, in 
a crazy way. I think, I honestly, Silent Planet is Silent Planet. I won't compare, compare, but I think you guys, at least compared to the other three bands that played after y'all, you did the best. You no, had the most I unique sound. Mean. Johnny Booth, yeah. Aviana, and... Uh, Those are all sick bands, too. Yeah. Yeah. They and are Thornhill, bands, fucking yeah. from Australia. That yeah. was awesome. I played with Thornhill, and they're fucking good. Yeah, good. Yeah. What about you, any good plugs? Yeah. Uh... Last Night of Solace and Lanty Blue, we're, we're releasing stuff this year, both somewhat bodies of work. Uh, uh, that's all I do. I don't know. Possible tour music. later this year? Possible right? tour in the Are y'all going to yes. do like a Dallas date of that tour? 100%. All right. Yeah. Houston? I'll fucking be there. Thank you. Mm. You got a Houston date? I was about to say. Hey, hey. hey. work some shit out. out. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. happening. Boom. You down? You down? Yeah. I'm down. <laughs> John yeah. and John. Uh, it's the same old, same old. You know what I mean? You know, check out Unity TX. Check out Zeta Bite. Uh, Unity. We had a record virality drop in September. Still going strong. <clears throat> There's a might be some special something dropping right before we leave for that tour in the beginning hey, of April. Yo. Keep your eyes peeled. I don't know. What do I know? But you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, Zeta Bite also right on the tail. Got some new stuff coming out. Uh, it's gonna be sick. So check it out. Oh yeah, check out every one of those things. Uh, and just follow these guys because they've been doing amazing things for quite a while now. Uh, and I'm just happy to be in this room and then, like, I can call them my friends. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. This has yep. been episode 100, the drummer special. Uh, <laughs> we will see you next time. Yep.